Hello everyone, welcome back once again. So this video is all about preparation and also initiation to a new topic and that is called the cloud application programming model. I have been receiving a various requests from my viewers like who are also very keen to learn this topic. Hence this is kind of a motivation you can think through like for sharing a new series of discussion. Side by side I also you know working on the SAP Y5 and Fury learning series and whoever closely following the discussion uh, should expect receiving new contents and relevant uh, you know discussions on these topics as well so if this all interests you and willing to keep yourselves updated with the latest and cutting edge technologies on SFA btp digital innovations and something similar you must subscribe to this channel and also don't forget to hit the bell icon because that will intimate you or notify you on my next publish which you might be looking for now let's focus on certain buzzwords which probably a bit confusing initially let's say for example is for hana cloud sdk then sap cloud sdk sap cloud platform sdk capm cloud extension factory or sap extension suite so i mean what are those you know terminologies how are they going to fit with our concurrent capm discussion now what happened initially before capm uh, came into picture sap already had uh, the the new environment or maybe which is the runs on SAP data center as well as the AWS and GCP or Azure kind of you know hyperscalers on which uh, SAP uh, runs as a cloud foundry right so those cases whatever the application which call it as a native application or a native you know cloud PTP application so there SAP wanted to create uh, certain offerings uh, provide certain offerings in terms of SDK, which is a software development kit, as we all know. And that's all purpose was to integrate with S4 HANA, which is a software as a service, right? That which, you know, leverages certain business functionality in the form of APIs, right? Which uh, kind of an auditor services or REST service, which, uh, you know, SAP just created certain SDKs to integrate or kind of you know, access those auditor uh, services and consume them to get the data back and forth right so that is the purpose initially as we created that SDK which they used to call it as S4 HANA cloud SDK but that SDK eventually you know not limited to S4 HANA APIs but it also deals with uh, kind of you know any other OData service or you know REST service so there is no point to make it kind of an S4 HANA cloud SDK so what happened is we rebranded that in 2019 uh, in an SAP Sapphire and they just started calling it as an SAP Cloud SDK kind of a more generalized terms you can think through now SAP Cloud Platform SDK is nothing to do with those integrations but it's more of you know Android and iOS development now coming to CAPM which is definitely the latest uh, or maybe the kind of a model that we are currently discussing I'll definitely look at the different architecture of CAPM but think about CAPM, it's offering on top of the cloud SDK, right? So uh, I mean to say like CAPM and cloud SDK are not dependent, independently they can coexist. So you can have service SDK also along with CAPM feature uh, and you build a kind of a robust application in the cloud BTP. So they basically offer certain things called core data service, which is the, you know, a kind of a data model or domain model uh, that SAP uh, allows developers to create uh, which basically a replica of the business domain and it uh, can be deployed uh, to the underlying database table and it can be an SAP HANA cloud as a preference a recommendation by SAP side by side they are also offering other database you know options let's say for example PostgreSQL, MongoDB or maybe other uh, you know SQL uh, databases that it's offering to integrate one more concept that is called cloud extension factory uh, and uh, if we just know a little bit uh, try to understand this factory concept it's eventually evolved and developed and currently that's rebranded again of course you know, a lot of you know uh, innovations been made on top of and they are now calling it as a, actually SAP extension suite so no more you're calling it as a cloud extension factory but it's more about an SAP extension suite so before we uh, you know, get into that extension suite, let's understand quickly the CAPM architecture first. And this is the architecture that we need to deal with. So the left side part is called it BAS or other. It, it is nothing but an ID or integrated development environment 
BS means nothing but a business application studio. And other IDs also you can use to create your CAPM application. Other IDs mean maybe in Eclipse or it can be a VS Code. So that IDs you can just select and you can you know, create your uh, CAPM application. Other than those, you can also VM edit, right? Now, but recommended is BAS because a lot of installations like Node and uh, kind of a Marvin, those installations you don't need. It will be pre-installed if you just select the proper, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure uh, or kind of a space, development space when you will create uh, with this uh, business application studios and ID. We will see those kind of things in detail. Coming back to SAP CDS, which is a core data service, as I just explained, it's an additional capability that CAPM offers uh, and uh, along with those capabilities it also does have the cloud SDK uh, which is now able to integrate uh, with other third-party platform services it can be uh, S4HANA cloud or can be success factor or Ariba whatever the different SaaS uh, as I mean to say the software as a service that SAP offers on the cloud so there are or maybe other third-party auditor or restful APIs also you can uh, think through those kind of options also now available for capping to integrate with through this services ticket. Now the front end is uh, actually recommended is of course Fury or UI5, but other you know UI framework also can be considered. For example, ReactJS if you want to create an application with, or maybe Angular, or, or even the community built view you can use to build your uh, nice and you know uh, enterprise ready uh, your. Uh, front end application right so that is also other than fury the options are still open for you to choose uh, choose from uh, for the database as i said hana but other than hana as i said other uh, database options are also available now the infrastructure is all cloud there on which you'll be running this uh, particular capping model and just the the services seeker what about the programming language that uh, sap is currently offering is only two and there is the Node.js and the other one is the Java. So if it's a Node.js, it will be an express as a framework it offers. And when it's a Java, it's a Spring uh, framework, Spring Maven kind of a things that SAP offers to uh, create that capping function or capping model. In my current focus of this discussion, it will be Node.js predominantly. And uh, if there is a demand or if, if there is a uh, kind of an arch to learn also on the Java, then in a later period of time also you can dig into this topic and understand how the capping can also be built using a java or spring kind of a framework so one part is still late for us and this is extension suite let's also little understand before we close this session for today and that is called the capping when it's considering as an extension suite but why this extension suite is at all needed at the first time at the first go so let's understand that so think about that you have s4 hana cloud side by side you have Ariba, Concur, Field Plus, or maybe other uh, SaaS, maybe success factors. So all those different uh, options you have, right? And you have building your uh, different applications across the different services, right? So obviously, it is very difficult for, you know, the end user to just follow along all the different system, getting an access and, uh, you know, get those services uh, used uh, for their purpose. It may happen that they are just going to consolidate this information and the kind of a reporting or kind of a dashboard they want to create. And all the kind of different systems they want to access in a pretty simple form. So then the extension suite concept came and is it actually SAP offers two kind of an approach, what is called in-app extension and side-by-side -side extension. So when it's an in-app extension means on the SAP S4 HANA side you have to do, nothing to do with the BTP side. And it is more of a, a simple kind of a UI level change and maybe UI orchestration or arrangement, I would say rather, arrangement of the UI uh, different uh, positioning, right? Side by side, it also offers a little bit on the coding and logic, which is called a CFL, custom field and logic, if you want to add some custom fields on top of what SAP offers a standard uh, functionality. And you want to write a little bit logic over there, you can do that. And that logic you have to write it through restricted ABA. But if that is, that doesn't suffice and you need an kind of an extensive way of customization right and you need to integrate with different systems so then what happens like it will be more of an side-by-side -side extensions that you need to uh, look into so what will happen in that case i'll be using capim as a application it depends on maybe you are running on an i mean different kind of an environment you can you can have like say for example cloud foundry uh, you can have a schema runtime serverless 
or it can be above environment right so three different environments of that so if it's running on cloud foundry you can just you know create a capm application with a favor of nodejs or java and then you can use a uh, kind of an, an extension uh, suite feature and uh, you know accessing and consuming those services which are actually available on the s4 hana or other you know uh, different SaaS service so in this case what will happen you need to create certain communication arrangement communication scenario and users through which you have to expose those kind of uh, apis which are actually existing outside of ptp all right as i said and it will eventually create a, a kind of a connection point with btp in the form of destination service so uh, once you have your captain created uh, in that you'll be using those services dk as you have just seen above in this architecture so this services dk will be using and then you can consume this destination service as a uh, and it will basically fetch all the entity information in the form of vdm which is called a virtual data model right so that way you'll be able to uh, create uh, a full-fledged application, full-blown application where you have an integration with different uh, other systems and uh, just following the SAP extension suite uh, process. That's an awesome way that SAP is offering. So that pretty much the high level of the CAPM and what I am planning to do in the next episode, it's moreover a kind of a step back. I don't want to jump into SAP series creation or maybe deploying to HANA kind of uh, things. Rather, I feel uh, like it will be better if I also a little bit, you know, focus on the Node.js first, like how Node works, right? What is that express, how this express frame works and how this different HTTP calls that you can make. So those kind of, you know, basic fundamentals about Node needs to be clarified, I believe so. And once you get those concepts, uh, you know, rather grasp those concepts, it will be pretty easy for you to follow along and you know also practice it well uh, with your own you know confidence uh, and you know comfortability so having said that in the next episode i'll be starting starting on the nodejs and after a couple of videos i'll be then move back to our original topic which is a capm with a node version thanks for watching stay tuned and soon we'll come back uh, with the topic on node as i said goodbye till then